we are going to start into calculus. And the big thing that we're going to study in chapter two is limits. Okay. The idea of limits is that you're actually not at a static location. Okay, like here's Colorado, there's Denver. You're not at Denver, but you're going to Denver from either side on I-70. Okay, so I have left and right motion involved here. So where is the graph going? All right, to start that, we want to study rates of change. Okay, you might also know that as slope, right? So if you graph a line, you have a slope, correct? Slope of that line, okay? So lines, we can calculate slope, which you've done much of in the past. Where we go with this in calculus, okay, is that we actually start putting curves all right, that could be you know, y equals x squared. And what we start doing is asking, okay, how is this curve changing over time? Okay, what is the slope of a particular curve? Okay. Now, in the past, again, okay, we had a line, very easy to calculate slope of a line, right? Rise of a run. For a curve, a little different. So, let's say that um, we want to estimate the rate of change of x squared over from x equals 0 to x equals 2, okay? I could also write it over 0, 2, okay? These are x values denoting a travel from one x to the other, okay? That's called an interval notation, right? So how would we do that? Got a line there, right? So the average rate of change, we might also call that average rate of change of that line from x equals 0 to x equals 2. Okay? It is simply the slope calculation. Okay? Remember, in other words, rate of change. Okay? So we have 0, 0 and 2, 4. So your slope is 4 minus 0 over 2 minus 0 is 2. Okay. So average rate of change, we can say the slope is approximately 2 of that curve. Um, the thing we do in calculus is we start to ask, well, what is happening at, at a particular point? not across an interval, but at that point, right? So obviously, you can't calculate a slope with one point, okay? So the question becomes, this is called a tangent line. Okay. The vocab word for this is secant line, because it touches twice. A tangent line touches once, okay? How do we calculate the slope of a tangent line? Okay. We have to estimate it. Okay. And we have to basically what we do is we choose the dot, we'll choose 2, 4. But we need to choose something super close to that. Okay, like the other dot is gonna be like right there. Right there. So we'll choose say 2.01 as our x value and what is that as squared? 
4.01-ish, okay, so right. So we're going to estimate the slope of that line because we can't do it perfectly with just one point yet. Position. Okay. 
function, right? So I would say estimate um, the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 0 0.8. Okay, so choose x values like 0 0.8 and 0 0.81. They're super close, right? So you're going to get as close as you can right now. Right, so the point at 0 0.8 is... Point one three six is the y value, and then point one three point two one four eight nine. And you can see it's got to be really accurate here. So now we're going to calculate our slope. Now, what is this calculated? Okay, that is calculated the speed or velocity in meters per second of that stone. Okay, so you take position at 0.8 seconds, stone is at 3.136 meters. At 0.81, it's at 3.2489 meters. Okay, so seconds and meters. You can take that data, position, and estimate the velocity at that spot. Okay. It's about as accurate as you can get. And I can tell you the actual answer is 9.8 times 0 0.8 is 7.84. Okay, so this is an estimate, the actual, which you will learn how to calculate is 7.84 meters per second. Okay. So again, be able to calculate position from time given a function and use these function values for the points to calculate a slope. Okay? That's about it. I'll sh we'll talk more about it in class. Okay, but you have a few problems to do. So 2.1, bring these to class. Okay. So we will check these as a homework score. It's number 11, 15, and 17. Thanks for your time.